morning, everybody. It's Shelly from St. Andrews, and um, I am bringing you this morning Sunday school lesson from my back porch because it is such a beautiful fall day, and I love being out here. It reminds me of uh, God's creation, and it brings me a sense of calm when I'm out here. It's one of my favorite places, and so I thought that I would bring your Sunday school lesson to you from one of my favorite places. The sky's blue. And the grass is still green, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful fall day. So we're going to start today's lesson with a question. I want you to think about how many times your heart beats in 15 seconds. Okay. So take a minute and find your pulse, your heartbeat. You can find it at your neck, kind of right here below your chin. Or you, sometimes you can find it here on your wrist. Or you can even sometimes... Feel it through your chest. So I want you to take a minute and find your heartbeat. And we're going to count how many times our heart beats in 15 seconds. So take a minute and find wherever you want to, on your neck or wrist or on your chest. All right, here we go. Start counting. Almost there. All right. Did you feel how many times your heart was beating in that 15 seconds? So for today's lesson, we're obviously going to talk about our heart. But we have got to join Jesus on that mountain. Remember, he took all those people to the top of a mountain, a huge crowd that was following him, to the top of the mountain. And remember, he could see their hurts and their pains, and he cared very, very much, very deeply for them. And he wanted to teach them. And so we're going to join him today as he leads them up that mountain. So let's climb the mountain to join him. Remember, there's lots of ways you can climb a mountain, right? So you could march up a mountain, just hiking it. You could climb up a mountain, right? Your arms and legs on your hands and your feet. You could roll up a mountain in a wheelchair that's made for hiking. So there's lots of ways to climb up a mountain. So I want you to pick one, and then we're going to get ready and climb up that mountain together. Here we go. We're going to move. Are you ready? You got your way you want to go? All right. One, two, three, go. Let's climb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're almost there. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh. We're at the top of the mountain. So everybody take a minute, kind of settle your bodies back in your chair. Let's take a deep breath and let's look around. Remember, at the top of a mountain, we kind of see things from a different way. So let's see. We have a different perspective when we're on a mountain. Let's look around and see what we can see. It's a little bit different when you look at things from the top of a mountain. Right? So let's remember that in Jesus' time, people thought that mountains were very holy and special places to be with God. They wanted to be in the presence of God, and so they thought that the mountain was holy and special where they could do that. Maybe because mountains reach up so high in the sky. And so Jesus led these people up the mountain. Remember, we've been talking a little bit about he's uh, telling us and teaching us about what his kingdom is like, what God's kingdom is like. And we've been talking a little bit about that a kingdom is really um, not necessarily castles and kings, but just the way the world is set up and the way that things run is the way that a kingdom is really um, set up. And the way God's kingdom is a little bit different than maybe the way we're used to the kingdom around here in our everyday life. So remember that God's kingdom is different because there's more than enough in God's kingdom. There's an abundance. It's called an abundance. More than enough of food and shelter and love and power and money and um, resources for every single child of God to thrive. Not just to make it, but to thrive and do well. And so we've been talking a little bit about what God's kingdom is like in these last few weeks. 
And today, Jesus is going to tell us a little something else about how God's kingdom is set up. He says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Hmm. Let's say that again. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. You see, Jesus cares about our bodies and our minds and our hearts. right? So he cares about how we act and how we feel and how we think hand over your heart right now. In our bodies, the heart is sort of thought about as the center. Our beating heart is what keeps us alive right now. And the heart is also the center of how we live our lives. Uh, what we, it carries what we need and what we want, what's important to us and what we value, um, our emotions. It carries all of those things in our hearts. And what we carry in our hearts has a big impact on how we act and the choices that we make on the outside of our bodies. So the inside, what we carry on the inside of us, kind of directs what we do on the outside of us. This is why the heart, the inside of us, is so important to Jesus. And it's why Jesus said that the pure in heart will be blessed. Okay. Now, we don't know what that means. What does pure of heart mean, right? We want to be that. Jesus told us to be that. So what does that mean? To be pure in heart is to show love for God and for each other, your neighbors, and for yourself. And how you act and how you uh, speak and how you think. Our integrity is an important part of us. Now that's a big word. Let's talk about what integrity is. So you're a person who has integrity when your outside actions, what you do and uh, what you say, when your outside actions match the person you are on the inside. Okay? And to be pure and have integrity means that you're always thinking and acting and speaking in ways that bring people to wholeness. Okay? Wholeness for you, but also wholeness for other people. Other people that God created. Okay? So when your heart is pure, you want wholeness for yourself, but you also want wholeness for everyone else. When you uh, live with integrity of what's in your heart and it's pure in your heart, you find that you do kind and helpful things because you love God and because you love your neighbors and your family and your friends. So you do those things not because you're focused on what you're going to get right, or um, how good it makes you look. Right? You're doing them because you love God and because you love them and you love other people. So maybe, maybe you empty the dishwasher without being asked. Because you know that that is a way to show a grown-up in your life that you love them. Or maybe you uh, pick up all your toys and your markers and everything up off the floor when you're done. So that you make the house a safe place. And it's a way to show love to other people that live in that house with you. Not because your mom or your dad or your granny told you to. Or that you're going to get something out of it. But you simply do those things as a way to show love to other people and because you love God. Okay. And in this way, we are, we're showing what's called compassion and mercy and love because that's what we're created to do. Okay. And that's what we're created to do and why we're created. Okay. It's just love God and love others. Have compassion and mercy and love. Show those things is a way to show the purity that's in your heart. Our purity in our heart helps us make outside choices that will show love to God and to others. And you know, the funny thing is, is when we do that, we start to see God. Okay? So we'll see and we'll experience God's love in the fruits that he gives us in ourselves. And we'll see the fruits in other people. So we'll start to see more love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness and 
faithfulness and gentleness and self-control in us when we start to act out of the integrity in our heart and to love others and to show love to them by the way the things we do and the things that we say. Okay. And you know, our eyes will be open to the way that we see other people, how they're treating other people. Isn't that funny that we start to see God's love in that way in other people and how they're showing God's love? Not only do we have the fruits of the Spirit show up in us, but we start to see them in other people. Okay? And sometimes they show God's love to us as well, right? Out of the purity of their heart. And that's how we experience God's love. And when our eyes are open like that, then we get the hope and encouragement that we need to keep doing and loving in that pure heart kind of way. So before we talk a little bit about the activities for this week, of course, I want to bless you. Okay? And remember, a blessing is something you receive. right? So you receive it. Let's open your hands like this. Remember, you receive it. It's a gift, something you receive. Okay? And then you take it and put it in your heart. So I'm going to give you a blessing. If you want to receive it, you put your hands out like this. And when I'm done, you take it and you put it into your heart. Are you ready? Here you go. Put your hands out. Here is your blessing. May God bless you inside and out. From your heart to your mind and your body. Amen. All right, let's talk a little bit about the activities that you guys can have uh, to do this week to kind of um, remember what Jesus meant when he said, the pure of heart, blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. One of the things is, of course, the discussion questions, right? I decided to color my page, and I think you might too. This is something that you can talk about with your parents and kind of um, get their ideas about what that particular thing is that Jesus meant when he said, blessed are the pure of heart, for they'll see God. So here's some of our questions on the discussion page. One is, you might want to ask your parents, when you think of a pure heart, what do you picture? The other question is, what do you think are some of the right or pure reasons to show love and compassion? And the last question is, when have you done something kind or helpful because you just wanted to show kindness? How'd that feel? Those are some really good discussion questions that you and your parents can talk about and get their ideas and opinions. And you might be able to share a few too yourself. Okay. So that's one option. The other one I really love this time, you can write your own poem. Okay. And it looks like this. You're going to see it in something that you can download and your parents can print out or you can just talk about it in your own poem. So this is our poem, and you've kind of got an outline here for your poem, and I did the poem for me. So these are my answers, but your, your poem about you will be entirely different. So our poem is called Purely Me. Inside and out, up and down and all around, I am me. On the outside, you see a Sunday school teacher, I have blonde and brown hair. You see that I wear glasses on the outside. You can see me at church. I'll always have a coffee cup with me. I love coffee. And I'm Sarah's mom and Jenny's mom. On the outside, you see those things. On the inside, inside of me, you'll find somebody who's curious. Hmm. Somebody who loves their family and friends. Somebody who's actually very quiet on the inside. And at sometimes I'm scared or sad on the inside. That's what is on the inside of me that I carry around with me. And something you might not know by looking at me is I like to read all kinds of books. Something you might not know just by looking at me, right? 
That is me, purely me. And God loves every part. That's a poem about me. But this paper, this is something that you can work on too and create your own poem. And you know what? I bet Miss Kelly would love if you would share your poem with us. That would be fantastic. So we're going to wrap up for today. I want you guys to kind of get settled and we're going to close with a prayer. And we're going to um, think this week about uh, what exactly that means to be pure in heart. And let's start to see how God is at work with those fruits of the Spirit in us and how his love is shown in other people. Okay? So bow your heads. I want you to repeat after me this prayer and we'll close for the day. Loving God, you are always real and true in what you do and promise. Please help us live our outward lives from pure inward hearts. We want to think speak and act because of our love for you and your world. We want to see your spirit active and at work and be part of your team. Amen. So guys, I want you to have a great week and we'll see you next time. And maybe next time we'll have another beautiful fall day that we can talk about our Sunday school lesson in one of my favorite places.